What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. Now in today's video, we'll be talking about the HP Omen 16's battery performance and more about the Omen Gaming Hub as it relates to that topic. As for this video, it's featured on the HP Omen 16 playlist so you can find information related to this topic quickly and easily. And please be sure to leave your questions and comments down below in regards to this hardware and software as it may inspire future videos. As always, we only feature products or services I buy use or am interested in. Now you can find the HP Omen 16 and related items at the Amazon storefront link in the description below. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So before we actually get started with this tutorial, I want to exit what we have here, which is the Omen Gaming Hub, so I can actually show you how I got here. So if we go to my desktop and we look at the taskbar here, you can see that we have the Omen Gaming Hub app icon. It's diamond shaped. It's got some red, some yellow, orange, and purple. And we can tap on that and that would open the Gaming Hub. But the nice thing about the HP Omen 16 is it has a dedicated keyboard button for the Omen Gaming Hub. And if we tap on that, it is going to open the app. And you can see we get this nice little load in function going on there. And then the app opens fairly quickly. Now I'm going to move my camera here a little bit. If we look at the left side of the app, you can see that we have this bar of items and we're going to look for our device, which would be our Omen 16. And we're going to click on that. And that's going to refresh the page and bring us to what we have here, which is going to be our monitors and our area to adjust the performance of the HP Omen 16. So just to quickly review the tabs here, we have system vitals, a lot of information here, visuals, stats, nice to see. It's very helpful when you wanna know why the HP Omen 16 is performing the way it is and how you can troubleshoot it to help it perform better. We have a network booster, which we haven't covered yet. We have Lighten, which we've covered in another video. Mainly what we have for Lighten is the keyboard, so again, that's in that other video. You can find that video by clicking on the card in the corner of this video. Then we have the performance control and then the graphics switcher. So for this video, we're going to be focusing on those last two the most. So I'm going to click on the performance control tab and we're going to start with power modes. So first we have balanced and that's going to be for less intense tasks such as write-in, internet browsing and video. Then we have a performance power mode. That's for more intense tasks such as gaming and content creation. And make sure you keep an eye on the fan speed here. You can see how it changed. You may not be able to hear it, but the fans did get a little bit louder. Underneath this, we have thermal control. That is going to be basically the control for the fans. So we're on an auto mode. And if we select max, again, take a look at that fan speed it's going to increase, it's going to almost double. So we were in the 3000s and now we're going to 5,000, almost 6,000. That's going to help keep things cool. I'm going to try to speak louder. Hopefully this serves as a good fan test. And then we have a manual thermal control option. So again, the fan speed is going to drop. Again, I'm hoping that you can get an idea of what this sounds like. Now, the interesting thing is if you already have the power mode performance selected, you can't drop the fan speed below 4,400 RPM. You can only make it higher. Now, if you do want to lower that fan speed, you'd have to go to the power mode option and select balance. And now you can see we have the full range of control. We can drop the fan speed all the way down here. So again, listen here, look at that fan speed. That way you can get an idea of how things sound like, how fast these changes take place. And you can see that we're going down to 3000. But I'm going to select the auto thermal control for this video. And then underneath this, we have system temperature. That kind of relates to the system vitals. Again, gives you a good window into what's going on with your device. So moving on, we have the graphics switcher tab, which we're going to click on. I'm set to discrete right now which is ideal for gaming and content creation. Again, more intense things. There is a hybrid option. 
So again, that's going to be for more simple things such as writing, internet browsing, and video consumption. Now, the interesting thing is if you want to switch from one option to the other, again, we're on discrete. If I wanted to select hybrid, I would have to restart the PC for the changes to take effect, but we're going to tap on cancel for the time being. And that brings us to our first battery test. So the graphics switcher was set to the hybrid option and performance control, we selected balanced for the power mode. Thermal control was set to auto. So again, the fan speed is going to change. It'll probably get higher depending on if we need more fan speed, but it's not going to be running at the max all the time. So it's a balance of cooling, but keeping things quiet. Just, just again, being balanced here so we can do a balance of productivity or maybe a little bit of performance with a balance of cooling and efficiency. Now for this test, we also didn't use any battery saver and display brightness was set to about 50%. So for this test, we did gaming, which is what you would expect someone would do on this device. And as you can imagine, this profile that we created is not the best for gaming because we're using a power mode that's balanced and a thermal control that's auto. And specifically that thermal control comes into consideration because with auto, those fans aren't running all the time. They're not running at the max speed. So this device is getting hot because we're performing an intense test, which is gaming. And what you'll notice when gaming on this profile is that you're going to see a drop in gaming performance, specifically the frame rate. And talking about temperatures, the CPU and GPU reached 145 degrees and 135 degrees respectively. Now that's not the hottest. Now that being said, I would recommend regardless of what modes or profiles you create per se, you do wanna have a laptop stand or a riser instead of having your laptop on a flat table because you're going to get more airflow under the laptop and into the fan area and it'll push out easier out of the back of the laptop. So you'll get better intake and better exhaust, which leads to better cooling, which is better gaming performance. So all things considered for this test, it took us about 47 minutes to go from 100% to 15%. Now for our next battery test, we had a power mode of performance, a thermal control of max. So that fan speed is going to be picking up and the fans are going to be running all the time. And then we had a graphic switcher of discrete. So that changed from hybrid to discrete. Now I'm going to try to speak louder. These fans are going to get really loud. And again, we didn't use battery saver and we actually did increase the display brightness to 100%. Now this test is simulating that we're going all in for gaming. That being said, I did expect this test to be dramatically worse than the first test but we actually only got a little less time, just a few minutes less than that first test of gaming. So it took us about 45 minutes to go from 100% to 15%. Now that being considered, if you are going to be gaming on the battery, I'm going to say you're better off just going for the max settings, which is what we have here. Because if you're going for a more conservative approach and you're going to try to game on it, you're going to sacrifice gaming performance just to get two or three extra minutes for gaming. But regardless of which option you choose, it's obvious you're going to want to bring your power supply with you because you're going to be running to an outlet fairly quickly before you know it and you're going to have to charge up. And our last battery test was geared at productivity. So that being said, we didn't have to have this high performance profile that we just created. So the graphics switcher we actually had on hybrid and going to the performance control tab, we had a power mode of balance and a thermal control set to auto. Now, some other things worth mentioning, we did have battery saver enabled. Finally, we had display brightness at about 50%. And I also turned off the keyboard lighting. So for this profile, we did a lot of writing, internet browsing and cloud gaming. Now, this is where cloud gaming could actually be useful. I know a lot of hardcore gamers, gamers with consoles and gaming laptops and gaming PCs make a lot of fun about cloud gaming. But to be honest, when you're cloud gaming, you don't need these high performance profiles. So you can play some really good games as long as you have a solid Wi-Fi connection and you can go on battery for a long time. 
So those things considered, it took us about four hours to go from 100% to 15%. That's going to be pretty good. It's, it's actually going to be really good. Now I would still bring that power supply, but four hours is enough time to get a lot of work done. You're probably going to want to take a break in between that. You're not going to be using this device for four hours straight. But if you do need to do some productivity stuff on this, it does give you some confidence knowing that you can go four hours on the battery and actually get stuff done. And then we have charging and the charging test I kept pretty simple. I closed the lid on the HP Omen 16 and obviously the computer was on, so it was in a sleep state. And it took us about two hours to go from 15% to 100%. Now that being said, comparing it to other items like our smartphones or Chromebooks, this device does charge really slow. But we have to remember that the HP Omen 16 has a four cell 70 watt hour battery. It holds a lot of power and that means it's going to take a long time to charge as well. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now there are three ways you can support the content. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or would buy and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way to show your support is just by sharing this video with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way to show your support is just by clicking the subscribe button. Now liking and subscribing are important because those are your ways to vote on whether you like the content. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, and listening to. As always, thanks for watching and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon checking out. Yeah.